Hi, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. A lot of autistics I know have this experience where people tell us that they want us to be honest with them, so we tell them the truth, and then they get upset, or defensive, or deny it, or they might say, thanks for your honesty, yet things are weird between you two later. When that happens enough times, it can put you on your guard and teach you that people don't really want to hear the truth, and then you're stuck in this situation of trying to guess what the other person really wants, and that can create a lot of anxieties. This used to drive me absolutely batty, because I felt like I didn't know which way to jump. And since I already believed that I was a bad communicator, and had had lots of experiences with other types of social situations that I didn't understand, it just added to the belief that I'm bad at people. As I started unmasking, I had more, more encounters where I was trying out actually expressing my real thoughts. Sometimes it went fine, sometimes it didn't, but in some ways it created a lot more internal distress than when I was masking because it was offering up more of my authentic self. And when that was rejected, it hurt more. When I was offering up a mask, the rejection wasn't as personal. This led to lots of ranting and crying at my therapist. My emotions were a lot more raw and closer to the surface than they had been in decades. Yet, I eventually got through the discomfort and decided that it was, in fact, worth it to be authentically me. That doesn't mean that I have to spew my unfiltered thoughts at every person, but when I do share, I share the truth. I share authentically. One of the things that I learned in that experience was that there are ways to tell whether someone that says that they want honesty actually wants it or not. Let me clarify a little bit about what I mean by whether they actually want it, because there are a few layers to that. Some people do genuinely value honesty, but don't necessarily want the full experience of it in this moment. Some people think that they want it, but don't like what the reality turns out to be. There are people who genuinely do want it and can handle it. And there are people who are working towards being able to handle it more, but their capacity at any given moment is inconsistent. By the way, people can move between these categories at different times. Sometimes they have the capacity to hear the full truth and the emotional bandwidth and the energy for it, and sometimes they don't. So it's not all or nothing, even for an individual person. And yes, there are also people who are at a place in their lives, possibly long-term, where they really genuinely don't want or care for your authentic experience. But what I've learned is that that doesn't necessarily say anything about you, despite what it feels like in the moment. It really does say much more about their own capacity and experiences and what they've gone through and are going through right now. Okay, so let's talk about how to tell the difference. People who tend to be manipulative, toxic, or abusive probably are in the category of they don't actually want it, no matter what they say. People who have unmasked extensively and have done a lot of personal growth work and are deeply in touch with their own authentic self and have gotten to a point where their self-compassion is high and their compassion for others is high and who can handle nuance and complexity are probably people who can at least most of the time, have the capacity, emotional energy, and desire to deal with your authenticity and complexity. When these people say that they want the truth, they probably genuinely mean it, and they're not gonna get upset about that later. They're not gonna go away and think bad thoughts about you or say that it's all good even when it really isn't. Okay, what about the complicated cases? Most people fall somewhere in the middle where sometimes they mean it and sometimes they don't. So it's harder to tell whether they actually mean it this time. It can be complicated because they might genuinely mean it sometimes and not at other times. And you're not always gonna be able to tell which has the upper hand at the moment. But that's not your fault because these are people who present a false sense of self in social company, which can include masking. Okay, this might be hard to hear. This is often us. I say us because this applies to most people. 
It definitely applied to me for most of my life and still does occasionally, but less and less so. For people that you have a history with, it's worth considering whether this person is someone who has a track record of saying one thing and meaning another, or getting upset even after they say that they're not upset. That doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Again, most of us fall into this category, but that's more weight on the side of if they want honesty, excuse me, if they say they want honesty, they might only want a little bit of it, but not the whole thing, especially if they disagree with your point of view. For new people with whom you don't yet have a history, it's a risk. You can't really know as you don't yet have enough evidence to tell. But again, that's not your fault. So you don't have to take all of the blame for this being hard or for getting it wrong. Okay, let's talk for a minute about the people who are trying to live more authentically and who value honesty in others, and yet they don't always live up to those values. I'm connecting people who are living authentically for themselves with people who are able to handle other people's truths because I believe that these things are intricately linked. I think it takes inner authenticity to be able to handle other people's truths. And the more that we unmask, the more that we face our own dark sides, the more that we live in integrity, the more that we can naturally handle it from other people. And doing that isn't a linear path or an inst instantaneous switch that flips on. It's not something that we either do or don't do, have or don't have. It's variable and shifting and a process. And that is deeply uncomfortable to be a part of and to be around which is why a lot of people avoid it. I'll tell you this quick story about when I was in my own process of unmasking. One time I was driving somewhere with a friend and she was following me in her car. After we got to our destination, I asked her for a little feedback on my driving and she gave me honest feedback that my speed wasn't always consistent and it was a little bit difficult to follow because I was speeding up and slowing down. My first reaction was to explain why. I wasn't trying to be defensive, I was just trying to explain that I don't have cruise control, so I wasn't able to maintain a perfectly consistent speed. But then I noticed that she had stopped talking, and her shoulders had drooped and hunched a little bit, and she was looking down, and those became clues for me. I caught myself and stopped talking, and I noticed that I had asked her for feedback, and then I was invalidating her response. I took a moment to think about that, and then I just said to her straight out, hey, you know, I just asked you for feedback, and then I argued, argued with you about the feedback that you gave me, but I really do want the feedback, so I apologize for that. What else did you have to say? I could notice her body language open up, and she relaxed, and her facial, facial muscles softened, and she did give me her other piece of feedback. I don't remember that what that one was, but I just said, okay, and thought about it and realized that she was right about both things. That was a really important moment for me, not because of the driving feedback, but because of the self-realization. I've always strongly valued honesty, even receiving honesty when it's difficult to hear. To me, there was a clear explanation for why my speed wasn't consistent. I didn't have cruise control in that vehicle, but that wasn't actually the important part. The important part was our relationship in that moment. I was able to take a step back in the middle of that conversation, not hours or days later ruminating on it for ages, but in real time, and I shifted my own perspective. I think that was an important moment for us in our relationship as well. We had been friends for years before that, and we remain good friends, but that was a moment when I was one of those iffy people who she couldn't trust with her honesty. And I moved a little farther towards the safe people category. It taught me, because of course I did reflect on it extensively after the fact, that I don't always live up to my own ideals, but that I can. And it showed me how, which was to focus on what she was trying to tell me more than my response to it. That's a really hard thing to do. And I think that 
that's why it's so much more com common for people to stay in the defensive mode. Moving more towards authenticity is an active state. It doesn't just happen. That was an important milestone for me along the journey. Now, when I ask for the truth, I can take it. It might be hard to hear, but I can handle difficult emotions now. And when someone asks me something, I'm going to give them an honest answer. It may not always be the full, unbridled everything. I do try to gauge what part of it or what version of it I think is appropriate at that moment. But whatever I say, it is going to be honest. Likewise, when I offer something to someone, it's a genuine offer. And if they take me up on it, I'm okay with that. Because I don't offer what I don't mean anymore. And on the flip side of it, I don't ask for things that I don't need. Okay, here's another part of the truth. What I just said is pretty accurate, but I can't claim that I'm perfect at this. I'm still finding bits and pieces of myself that I didn't know I had masked until I realized something. So it might be more accurate to say that I'm as honest as I know at any given moment. So my point to all of this is that there are ways to tell at least some of the time, whether someone actually wants honesty from you. But it takes a track record of knowing this person, and you're not always going to have that track record. When you don't, that's not your personal failing if you take them at their, at their word and it doesn't go well. At least for me personally, I'm past the point where I'm going to play games of trying to second guess where people are actually, whether people actually mean it when they say they want honesty from me. If it's a new person and they say that they want to hear the truth, they're going to get it. I might give them a small portion of the truth. It doesn't have to be an essay, but it's going to be the truth. And that's a litmus test. If they're okay with that much truth, I'll give them some more. And if they're not, I have more information about that person. It's building a track record. Yet in the future, I'm still going to give them the truth but it might be in small doses, or I just might not say anything because I'm past the point of playing the game of what do you want to hear? I've never been good with that one and I'm so done with trying. And maybe if they didn't actually want to hear it, maybe it'll teach them not to say, what, say that if they don't really mean it. Okay, I want to come back around to something that I mentioned at the beginning that I had a belief that I was a bad communicator. This was one of the types of situations that created that. But what I understand now is that whether someone actually wants the truth is a really difficult thing to be able to know. It's not just me being bad at this. A lot of people don't even know for themselves what the real answer is. And reframing it this way helped me shed a little bit of that shame that I had built up around the belief that I'm bad at people. Okay, I have one other thought on this, but it's kind of its own deal, so I'm going to talk about it in the next video. I hope this has provided some insight for you, and I wish you a neuro-wonderful day.